What is going on? Today we're going to do a video of changing the rear shocks. Uh, this is a 79 Coupe de Ville. This process is the same for 77 through 96. Uh, if you've seen my frame video, those frames are the same. Uh, nothing's really changed. Well, small, subtle things have changed, hence the reason I made that video. But as far as the suspension goes, they're the same. So this process will work on any of those rear-wheel drive cars. So we're going to get into it. Uh, before we do, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, leave a comment if you will. Appreciate it, and we'll get to it. All right, we got the car jacked up. I like to jack it up from the center of the pumpkin. That's my preference. As far as the jack stands go, I usually put them right there on the middle of the frame. Um, as you can see, I put it on the closed end side. Um, the side to the left of that, that's open CE channel. The part to the right, that is a full box part of the frame. It's a little bit stronger in my opinion. All right, we're gonna start out by removing the lower shock bolts. On these shocks, they are three quarter, uh, not saying all of them are gonna be the same. I actually wanna say they're 19 millimeter on the majority of them, but you know, different brands, different shocks, they do have different sizes. But yeah, we're gonna start removing this, then we're gonna push that out, let the pressure come off the shock, and then we'll start tackling the top bolts. All right, so we got our frame supported. Uh, I do have pressure on the rear end right now. I have the springs compressed a little bit just to take the uh, load off those shocks right there. If you have the suspension fully drooped, you're going to run into a pain trying to get that out. So just jack it up a little bit. You don't have to take it off the jack stands or nothing like that. Just put a little bit of pressure on it. Oh, isn't that just lovely? All right, we run into a problem that you may run into. Let's see how we solve that. Uh, we're hitting this with the impact. The whole stud is spinning. By the feeling of it, it is round on the back but we're gonna take a look and see what we can do to make this work out all right. All right, there's the back side of our shock, actually the front side, and you can see that is round. So we're gonna throw some vice grips on there, see if we can get to hold it for us. All right, we got our vice grip clamped on there. We're gonna give it a shot, see what she does. Make sure to set your impact from stun to kill. Of course. All right, we are running into worst case scenario. But you know, when you do something in front of your friends, everything goes wrong. Uh, what we got, we're gripping this. Well, you can see right there. We're gripping that, but the outside's spinning. So, with that being said, uh, sometimes they have a nut right there. This one does not, it's actually a spacer. Uh, we could try and chisel this off. I'm gonna grab my welder, put a little tack on there to hold those together, and then we're gonna commence just like we were. All right, she ain't pretty, but she'll hold till she doesn't. There we go. We'll just pull that out. And normally your shock would come down like that. But these things are shot. And I guess that's why you would be replacing your shocks. All right, you may notice the spring's missing here. Uh, you do not have to take it out by any means. I just took it out when we're removing it, too. It makes it a lot easier for you guys to see. But there's the top of our shock. That is a 13 millimeter. And the nut on top also is a 13 millimeter, apparently. There is... Uh, Two bolts, two nuts. There's one there, one on the back side. This one's pretty easy to get to. One way back in here. It's not too terrible. It's just a little bit of pain to get a wrench on it. But yeah, I'm gonna get a wrench up there and we'll take them off. Um, I'll actually take you outside. I got a bare frame that I can show you what it looks like from the top side. All right, here's the top side of that shock. That's what we're looking like. As I said, this one here is really easy to get to. This one here is a little bit of a pain, but it is definitely possible. All right, our bushing up there is super worn out, which is good. That works in our advantage because we can actually pull a shock to the side a little bit. I'm going to try and just hit it with an impact. Uh, sometimes you get lucky and it'll spin off the top. Um, we're not reusing these, so I don't really care about losing them. But yeah, if you're going to reuse them, probably be a good idea to try and keep a hold of them. But we're going to send some ugga duggas to it and see what it does. If I get it on there, here we go. And it's just spinning, which is awesome. We'll try it again here. All right, as I said, I'm trying to get this to where you guys can see and I can see. We can all see. This bolt here is fairly easy to get to. And I would kind of suggest doing it last. I know I'm doing it first, so don't take my advice. But yeah, we'll get it out of the way first. There you have it. But now we move on to the fun one, which I may end up grabbing a socket and putting on there. But we're gonna try it and see what we can do. 
All right, we're done playing around. We got a 13 millimeter. We're gonna put it up on the top. Weasel it in there somehow. Like I said, you basically gotta break your arm to get it up in there. I think I'm not gonna pull that shock out of the way for me. And turn that around. Yeah, shock out. And here we go. Still expecting that ratchet to be going the wrong way. All right, when you go to put your shock back in, obviously, let's put your shock in there. Push a bolt up through there. Push the uh, you know the stud of the bolt up there. I'll put that nut in between my two fingers and kind of squeeze my fingers together, hold it, just set it over it, and get them started. And then do the opposite of removal, pretty much. You know, use a uh, ratchet on that front side, use a wrench on this back side, and tighten them up. And use a leave. I'll start with this, leaving the shock hanging. And once you get that bolted up, usually your shocks will come compressed. They'll have a little tie wire around them. Uh, I'll leave that on there as long as I can uh, until you'll get those bolted up at least. And then I'll go ahead and cut it, and your shock should expand. And I'll slowly let it expand on its own, and I'll try and catch it right here as it expands, and then push it right in there so I'm not trying to fight it, pushing it up and trying to push it in there. But that's pretty much it. You know, put your bottom bolt on it, tighten it down, you're done. So that's how you change out the rear shocks on a Cadillac. This is the same for 77 through 96. This here is a 79. That's how I know it's the same through all those years. Uh, the frames are the same. There are subtle differences. Shocks are not one of them. So yeah, there you go. I uh, hope it helps you out. Uh, if you have any other questions, hit me up. Uh, leave it in the comment or you can message me on Facebook. Uh, if I have a video already, I'll try and send you a link to it. It just seems to be easier than for you guys to look for it. Usually I kind of know a time frame of when I put them out, so I can just go and grab a link and send it to you. Uh, other than that, appreciate you watching. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Remember, you won't know what you can do until you try. Get out and fix your shocks. See ya.